Here's increasing number of folks who have decided to not vaccinate against measles, and this is the end result of that. Uh, we have over 600 cases of measles thus far um, this past year in the United States, which is far above what we have come to expect. Uh, this is a disease that we pretty much got rid of in this country back more than 10 years ago, and now it's um, making a resurgence. Should we expect this to to get worse in the, the coming months and years? Well, oftentimes uh, we do see clusters now of measles within groups that have either chosen to not be vaccinated or unfortunately there's a very small number of folks who just don't respond to the vaccine and they remain susceptible to the virus. It is a serious illness uh, being complicated um, in some instances by pneumonia or other respiratory tract diseases, but what we really fear are some of the central nervous system uh, complications of this. It can cause an encephalitis, uh, in younger children when they get sick. Unfortunately, it used to be a pretty common cause of mental retardation and deafness. So it is a, a serious illness, again, one that we can pretty much eliminate by uh, really aggressive vaccination policies. We know uh, all of the places that this person was at. They had times they were at a church at this point, they were at Costco, at the Children's Museum. If someone was there um, at that location, say at the Children's Museum at the same time as them, what should they do? Yeah, so one of the scary things about this disease is that it is extremely contagious. This is one of the most contagious diseases that we know of. And so if you're sharing the airspace with somebody uh, and you're at risk, there's a pretty good chance that you'll actually contract this disease. So if there are people who were at those facilities uh, during that time period, it would behoove them to really look at their vaccination history, make sure that they're fully protected. So vaccination is now recommended for children at about the age of 12 to 15 months, and then again as they get ready to go to school at about age four to six years. If you haven't had that second vaccine and you're older, it's another indication to get that second dose. Now this is a live virus vaccine, and so there are some people that we don't wanna vaccinate. Uh, it's not recommended uh, for a vaccination if you're pregnant or if you're very immunosuppressed. Um, as I said before, we turn the cameras on. It's people that are older, maybe in their 50s or 60s, do they? is this something they need uh, boosters for or is this something that you're protected once you have that second shot for as long as you're alive? So for a little bit older individuals, it's likely that they contracted measles when they were children. So if they were born back in the 1950s, uh, they're probably okay. Um, if you're younger than that, then you should have had received two vaccines. Now, we didn't start doing a second vaccine until a little bit later on. So if you're unsure of, of your vaccine history, check. Uh, see if you've had that second vaccine. If not, you can get a second booster dose. Or there are ways to check your blood to see if you do have protective immunity. That would be another way to establish whether you need to be vaccinated or not. So if you talk to your parents and they're like, I don't remember if you got that second vaccine, that's something that can be tested or, or, or found out? Correct. You can uh, perform a serologic study to show that you have antibody directed against measles and then you know you're protected. Um, as far as the actual germ, you said it's, or measles, it's super, um, you can contract it very easily. So if I am, say, down in the lobby of Durham and someone coughs and they have the measles and I haven't got the shot, could I get it just being, you said, just in the same airspace? It's, it's sharing the airspace. So obviously um, in a large building, uh, that wouldn't necessarily somebody in the lobby and you're up on the fifth floor, you know, somebody sick here isn't going to infect somebody who's multiple floors away. But it can waft on air currents and there certainly are cases described where it can, you know, escape from the room, go down the hallway, go around the corner, get somebody else. So uh, whatever air currents are, are carrying this, uh, it's possible for those folks to be um, exposed and to, to get sick from it. How long does it live outside of the body, say? It, did the um, Children's Museum need to shut down and do a full-on clean when they found out about this, or was it probably already gone by that time? Yeah, so it's probably already gone by that time. This isn't one that we typically equate with environmental contamination and lasting for long periods of time on surfaces. This is very much an airborne spread virus. Uh, again, if you're in the vicinity of somebody who's sick, they're coughing, sneezing, breathing, 
that's how you come into contact with it. Generally not from touching a surface that's, you know, been left over from a previous person. Can you talk about the, um, I guess, symptoms of measles and I guess some of the, the results of having it? Sure. So luckily there's an awful lot of doctors now in the United States that have actually never seen a case of measles. So, um, you know, this is a disease we were very, very successful in eradicating but unfortunately has started to make a resurgence in those populations that have been unvaccinated or under-vaccinated. Typically the incubation period lasts for about a week to 10 days. You contract this generally or it, it, it announces itself with the onset of fever, uh, scratchy throat, uh, irritated eyes. Uh, then you break out in a generalized rash. This rash usually starts on the face or the head and then kind of spreads centrally. Red, blotchy sort of rash. The fevers can be quite high, 104, 105 degrees are not unusual. And then over the next four days, the illness starts to subside. So people are typically sick for about a week period or so. And we think that uh, people are contagious in those few days before they get sick and then in several days after they break out in the rash. So there's a long period of time, oftentimes four or five, six days, where they can be contagious and be spreading this disease uh, very readily to other people. Have you ever seen a case of, of measles? Um, unfortunately, I was actually involved in an outbreak back when I was in training in uh, Virginia. And so uh, we did see um, some cases within the hospital and we responded by vaccinating uh, several thousand people in within just a few days period of time. Um, I guess what does this say to you as a doctor? I'm assuming that people should be getting their vaccines. How, how important is it that, that people are, are getting vaccinated and vaccinating their children? Well this I think is a great example of the importance of continuing to vaccinate people against these vaccine preventable diseases. Um, measles continues to exist. It continues to be very, very contagious. And so people, uh, as they travel to other parts of the world, sometimes bring this disease back with them. Or again, this example is, you know, popping up here in, in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, many of your viewers probably heard about this outbreak that occurred in Disneyland just recently. There's somewhere around four dozen or so cases linked to people going and, and you know, trying to have fun with Mickey, but unfortunately getting something that they didn't expect. Is this coming from, uh, I guess we don't know the complete origins, but there, there seemed to be a pretty strong anti-vaccine uh, group there for a while and may still be out there, you know, parents against the vaccines and vaccines have these things in them that are killing our kids and causing autism. Is that part of this? Well, the, the autism link has been completely debunked. Anybody who looks at this in a rational way uh, will clearly recognize that the measles vaccine has nothing to do with autism. And I, I really wish we could expunge that, but unfortunately there continues to be this subcurrent of, you know, vaccines being linked to, to some of these other diseases. That one in particular, there's just no, you know, basis in reality that the measles vaccine is linked to autism. But despite that, you continue to have that pushback of, you know, we shouldn't be vaccinating for these diseases that have largely been eradicated. Unfortunately, the viruses continue to exist in nature. They continue to find their way back into this country. And if we don't keep the level of vaccine very, very high, we're gonna see these outbreaks and we're gonna see more and more cases. Is there any reason other than, is there any reason a healthy child should not be, be vaccinated as far as you're concerned um, for, for something like measles? Is there any true risks? Again, it's a live virus vaccine, so there are some children that should not receive live virus vaccines. That makes it even more important for the rest of us to be vaccinated so that we protect those few people that can't get the vaccine. And who can't get the vaccine? Well, it's, it's people who are severely immunosuppressed uh, in general. And again, this is not a vaccine that's recommended for women who are pregnant. Anything I have to Thanks so much. Sir. All right, you're welcome. Purpose, right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Did it on Later purpose. Came out. And so this is something that I, I've never seen this before where they've actually 
remove an article from the literature. Okay, so you can't go find this anymore. You know, it used mm -hmm. to be that, you know, somebody prints something, even, even when it was falsified, they would just, um, you know, uh, publish a retraction kind of thing. This is like, you know, they've just tried to get rid of it. Because otherwise people get a hold of it and keep, they say, they well, keep going back to it. People. But I, I really do feel like it was just horrific. And unfortunately, from those beginnings, yeah, we've got people who think that vaccine is linked to all kinds of stuff. You know, if it's not autism, it's some other neurodegenerative or, you know, behavioral disease. Um, and there's just nothing to suggest that that's the truth.